May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Before I begin this morning, I want to, uh, something I like to do relatively often is just uh, from time to time reflect, reflect the life of the congregation with you. And uh, one of the latest stories, and it's a wonderful story, has to be what occurred at the drive through nativity. Uh, we thank everyone who, who worked the drive through nativity. And uh, one of the uh, families that came down was comprised of, of course, parents and a little boy, about four or five. Kim, do I have that about right? About four or five years old, and he could not have been more excited to be at that drive through nativity. No doubt, probably drug his parents down there. And I think they all got out and came up to it, right, up to the display. And he had his picture taken uh, with the drive through He was just excited beyond belief. And uh, I'm sure you would agree with me that that makes it all worth it, does it not? There were maybe only 10 cars through. Yes, that's disappointing, but it had that little boy been the only person, that would all be worth it, right? Amen? Amen? You don't know the seeds God's planting. You don't know that. None of us could know. But God does promise over and time and again that his word will never return void. It never does. It accomplishes what it's designed to do. In every case, God is, God is faithful. I think that's just a, a wonderful, heartwarming story. And I'd, I'd also invite you to read the article in your bulletins this morning entitled, On Santa's Team. It's excellent. It's excellent. Well, it's no wonder, no wonder that we, we, uh, we greet Christmas. We greet Christmas with so much anticipation in our minds and in our hearts we have visions of the kind of world the uh, kind of world and the kind of people we can yet be let me tell you a little story about a man who experienced who experienced the same kind of transformation as the fictional character Ebenezer Scrooge from Charles Dickens a Christmas Carol. His name was John D. Rockefeller Sr. Rockefeller was born in 1839 and he became a millionaire at age 33. 33 is already a millionaire. This was in the day of course when one million bucks was an astounding amount of money. Rockefeller had a deeply, deeply religious upbringing, but as a young man, as a young man, he seemed to only have one obsession, one obsession, and that was the accumulation of great, great wealth. Well, at age 43, he owned and ran the largest company in the entire world, in the world, the Standard Oil Company. He controlled 90% of the oil in all the United States. By age 53, John D. Rockefeller was a billionaire. A billionaire. The only one in the world. The only one. Now, someone computed what $1 billion in the 1890s would be worth in today's dollars. And they came up with the astronomical sum of $336 billion, making John D. Rockefeller the richest man long and away that has ever, ever lived. And all this happened before he was 53 years old. Well, then he developed a disease. He developed a disease that caused all of his hair to fall out. His eyelashes and his eyebrows disappeared, and he became nothing but skin and bones. He could digest only milk and crackers because of a stomach ailment, and he couldn't sleep at all at night. 
The best doctors in the world told him that he wasn't going to live even one more year, no doubt about it. And then one sleepless night, John D. Rockefeller, he came to his senses and realized that he could not, that he could not, not take one solitary dime with him into the next world. And since he knew he couldn't take his money with him, he started giving it all away. He did wonderful things with his wealth. He helped churches. He helped needy people. He began the University of Chicago and Rockefeller Center University, as well as the University in the Philippines. He began the Rockefeller Foundation, dedicated to medical research. The Rockefeller Foundation was of course, instrumental in the discovery of penicillin. And at that point, at that point in his life, Rockefeller, he began to change. He began to change. He became able to eat normal food. He started sleeping. He also made a public profession of faith and was eager to be baptized. He attended church every single Sunday, even teaching a Sunday school class every Sunday, clear up until he died. And after having been told he would never, ever see his 54th birthday, John D. Rockefeller lived to be 97 years old. 97. Such transformations are possible. They're certainly possible. No question about it. Such transformations are possible for individuals. Such transformations are possible for an entire society. H.G. Wells. H.G. Wells once wrote a story titled, In the Days of the Comet. In the Days of the Comet. It's a science fiction fantasy in which a mysterious green vapor of unknown origin descends. This green vapor descends from the clouds and covers the entire earth. And the vapor has the immediate effect of putting all the earth's people into a deep sleep for three days. And when they finally awake, the inner nature, the inner nature is radically transformed. Petty quarreling comes to an end. Instead of seeking fame, power, and wealth, the people of the world seek to serve one another. Love, kindness, and generosity become actually more important than greater success. In short, the perfect society emerges, a society in which the dignity of every human being is honored. Now, the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah looked forward to that kind of day when, in his words, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Now, of course, Isaiah wasn't anticipating some green vapor that would come down out of the clouds. He was prophesying a shoot from the stump of Jesse. This was Isaiah's way of saying that there was a Messiah coming. A Messiah coming who would bring into a, a new kingdom. Bring a new kingdom in which love is more important than power and service is more important than domination. Christmas. Christmas, friends, is one magnificent word, but it contains all of humanity's highest hopes, all of humanity's highest dreams. For one sacred night, God walked down from his celestial throne into a dark and very broken world with a baby in his hands. Here, this baby is for you. God said to all who would open their hearts to him, Christmas, Christmas, one magnificent word but it'll change your life if you will let that baby into your heart. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer.
Almighty God, our light shining in the darkness, we give you our thanks, we give you our praise that the light of your love came into the world in the person of your Son, Jesus, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Through your Son, you created everything that is, seen and unseen. Through your Son, you gave us life. And through your Son, you gave eternal life to all who would believe in him. This is good news. Indeed, this is good news of great joy, the best news of all. For those of us who have grown so familiar with this news that it really begins to sound like old news, stir within our hearts. Stir within our hearts a renewed sense of wonder. Astonish us with the gift of your love. Kindle hearts that have grown cold. Help us to feel within our innermost being these good tidings of great joy. That unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Humble us. Humble us like those shepherds abiding in the field. We have nothing to offer you. We possess nothing that you need. We have no gift to give you that pays you back for the gift that you give us. We are poor beggars standing in need of your mercy, forgiveness, and grace. And yet you brought your good news to us. You invited us to celebrate your coming. You made a way for us to become your children and go on forever. Receive now the gift of our gratitude. Enable us to share this news with others through word and deed, that the whole world may experience this good news for themselves and be transformed by it. We pray this in the name of the one whose coming we celebrate and who taught us to pray in this way, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen.